The Dodgers have a new permanent shortstop, and it's not Gavin Lux, and they're interested in trading for a shortstop. Who will the Dodgers shortstop be in 2024? That's coming up next here on Dodgers Dugout. It's time for Dodger baseball. That's right, Dodgers have won it all in 2020. Mookie Betts. I don't care how many times this team rips my heart out, I'll never stop loving the Los Angeles Dodgers. Think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out. What's going on, Dodgers Nation? Doug McCain here. You can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. Now, if you haven't yet, do me a huge favor and subscribe to the number one Dodgers YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Hit that like button. And also, make sure you are subscribed and you comment done down below so you're eligible for our next giveaway at 90K. Still working on what we're going to give away, but we are going to announce it very soon. Also, on all your takes down below, what is your reaction to Mookie Betts being named the Dodgers permanent shortstop for now? What are your thoughts on Gavin Lux? What do you think the Dodgers should do at that position? Let me know down below. And for all latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. So we got some big news at a Camelback Ranch. The Dodgers have a new permanent shortstop for now, and it's not Gavin Lux. Mookie Betts will take over at the shortstop position where he played in 16 games, 12 starts, was at around league average at that position, and he will take over from Gavin Lux. And my first big takeaway to this news is this Dodgers team, they're not messing around. They saw Gavin Lux for a couple weeks, and they said enough is enough. We have a game in a couple of weeks. We're going to Korea. We're all in on this roster. And they said, we're going to Mookie Betts. And Dave was asked about the decision and what went into it. And he told reporters, the calendar where we're at, we got to make a decision. I think right now that's best for the Dodgers. So if you watch the morning show, we talked about this at length. And I said that Dave yesterday being non-committal with Gavin Lux at the shortstop position, that came from up top. That came from Andrew Friedman and company knowing that what needed to be done eventually was going to be done immediately. And they wasted no time. So give them credit for addressing this and not kicking the can down the road and trying to allow Gavlux to learn on the job with the pressure that he's dealing with him being unable to handle it. And Dave even said when it came to Gavlux and all the pressure of being the shortstop, he said that he, quote, was feeling the toll of it. So you had a combination of the pressure of being a shortstop, coming back from the injury. You had people talking about the yips and him just not being fundamentally sound with his legs to go and execute that throw. I think it's a good thing for Gavin Lux. Gavin Lux graded out as an above average second baseman. He proved that he could be an asset with his bat. He had a 109 OPS plus the last time we saw him. So he can be an above average bat and he can play the second base position at an above average level. So you got him at second base for now. And now you got Mookie Betts playing the shortstop position. And Mookie said that he called Gavin Lux when the decision was made and they spoke about it and they're on good terms and he said nothing's changed other than your view of home plate we're still up the middle together we still are doing this together so it doesn't really matter he also would say today to reporters it's always a lot of pressure especially going and being a dodger it's a lot of pressure so being a dodger being the shortstop for the dodgers it's a lot of pressure but i like it everything is tough about playing shortstop but somebody's got to do it It's all kinds of changes, but it is what it is. It's the task put in front of me, and nobody cares. Nobody cares what I got to go through. I don't care what I got to go through. On whatever day we are in Korea, I'll be ready to go. So first of all, give it up for Mookie Betts. Give it up for Marcus Lynn Betts, one of the very best athletes, one of the most talented players on the planet. This isn't normal. A guy to go from a six-time Gold Glove Award winning right fielder, one of the best defensive right fielders in the game, to go to second base, to go to shortstop, to play middle infield at an average level, right? He's above average at second, was average last season at shortstop. But guess what? Average isn't a bad thing when you hit 39 home runs, when you can hit over 100 plus RBI. Look, Dodgers fans, they're still upset about losing Corey Seager. Well, guess what? Now your shortstop puts up Corey Seager like numbers. So the big question for me is is this permanent? And like I said at the top, that's a masterclass in double speak by Dave Roberts. This is a permanent for now. 
What does that exactly mean? Does that mean permanent until you trade for Willie Adamas? Permanent until Gavin Lux can figure things out and gain more confidence and maybe learn to step into the throw a little bit? Does that mean giving Miguel Rojas opportunities, Chris Taylor opportunities, Kike Hernandez opportunities? What exactly does that mean? Does this mean that Mookie Betts is going to be playing 130 plus games at shortstop this season? Or are we going to see Mookie in there against right-handed pitchers and maybe against lefties you see him at second base and Miguel Rojas at shortstop. What exactly does this mean? I think you are going to see some Rojas. I think you will see some Taylor. I think you will possibly see some Kike who is coming back after that double hernia surgery. Hopefully he's going to be in a better position to have more success as your shortstop. But right now this feels like it's their plan to have Mookie Betts as your everyday shortstop. And yes, he can get it done. This is Mookie Betts. He's going to figure it out. He's too good of an athlete. He has the arm for it. He's a special special talent, but do you really want to have him go through the rigors and the wear and tear of being a shortstop? Because outside the pitcher, outside the catcher, that is the most demanding defensive position on the diamond. Just from the range you have to have, the balls being hit your way, the communication that you have to have with the infield. You are the guardian of that infield. Yes, he can get it done, but the wear and tear on your $365 million man, do you really want to put him in that position? Because yes, Yes, he's going to grab the bull by the horns. Yes, he's going to attack this opportunity, but you almost kind of want to save him from himself and also kind of picture, okay, what does this mean for him at the plate? Is his offensive numbers, are they going to suffer from this? He's going to have another 39 home run season. Is he going to have over 100 RBI? Because yes, you have Teoscar Hernandez, you have Shohei Otani in this lineup, but Mookie and Freddie, they had career years last year. You also had J.D. Martinez, right? So let's say Mookie, his offensive numbers slip a little bit. Freddie Freeman doesn't have as good of a year as he had last season where he had 59 doubles and 29 home runs. Well, how much better is your offense than really even with the addition of Shohei Otani? So the point I'm trying to make is you still want to maximize Mookie's bat because at this point of his career, that is what he does best. That is his biggest strength is him at the plate, getting on base, getting extra base hits, absolutely raking at an MVP level. He did that. Mookie, even at his best at shortstop, is not going to be a game-changing shortstop by the way the defensive metrics are going to grade him out. He can do whatever he wants from now until Korea. It won't be the shortstop defensively that Miguel Rojas is, okay? So that's something you have to factor in, and I just find it hard to believe that an organization that has this much invested in this team, that committed over a billion dollars this free agency, would say, you know what? We're going to move Mookie Betts to shortstop full-time. I just can't picture it. I just cannot picture it. That's why I found the wording there permanent for now. And this is coming on the heels of Fabian Ardaya's report yesterday in The Athletic, where he said that the Dodgers remain interested in trading for Milwaukee Brewers shortstop Willie Adamas, who is one of the best defensive shortstops in the sport, a guy that can provide some life at the plate, can hit you 20 to 30 bombs, right? So just imagine if the Dodgers went out there, they traded for Willie Adamas, you have Mookie back at second, you could be looking at 69, 70 home runs from your middle infield, right? I mean, just look at the offense offensive power that would provide and then you look at what does this mean for Gavin Lux because they still feel like this offense is optimized best with him at the bottom of the lineup providing that speed dynamic that he does having a 129 weighted runs created plus batting in the bottom of the Dodgers order a few years ago being that second leadoff hitter they can get on base and score runs and provide RBI opportunities for Mookie and Otani and Freddie so he still has value from that standpoint but it does make you wonder long term. It does make you wonder if they want to go out there and bring in a shortstop and then put Mookie back into second. They're not going to throw him into the outfield mix. That's highly unlikely but I don't think the Dodgers would want to trade Gavin Lux when his value is where it is currently and you want to see what you have in Jason Hayward right? Is Jason Hayward going to be able to produce like he did last season? What if his back goes back to the Jason Hayward that we saw for his last couple years in Chicago? Because if that's the case, 
Do you consider moving Mookie Betts back to right field? Do you consider having Rojas at short and Gavin Lux at second? So these are all possibilities, but right now you got Mookie at shortstop when we were told that, hey, you want to move Mookie to the dirt to keep him engaged. Also, try to keep his health preserved as he ages to try to kind of limit that wear and tear, not have to go from the dugout and run out to right field potentially nine times a game. So look, Gavin's getting moved. I still think his bat has a chance to play up at this level. And I also think that, look, you can't have a defensive liability on the left side of the infield, especially when you have all these pitchers that you've brought in, elite pitchers like Yamamoto and Glass now. You can't make them throw extra pitches and extra innings, especially guys like Yamamoto, who's trying to adjust from the MPB to MLB, and Glass now, who's only made a career high of 21 starts that was last season. So you just cannot have that, and you can't have Muncie and a Gavin Lux playing subpar defense. So this was the first move, but something tells me, my spider senses are telling me that this is the first move that just buys them some time till they truly figure out that shortstop spot. I'm not totally against the idea of having Miguel Rojas as your shortstop, and yes, offensively, he's one of the worst offensive shortstops. He's a bottom four offensive shortstop, some categories, bottom two, right? Did have a nice last 50 games or so where he was hovering around league average, did have the power surge by his standards where he hit a couple home runs there, five to be exact. But with Miguel Rojas, he's 35. That position, you don't age well. And can you truly expect him to play over 100 to 110 games at that position? I don't think that's the answer. I think Miguel Rojas is best suited as a depth piece, a late-game substitution for a shortstop or a third baseman. But guess what? You never want to take Mookie's bat out of the lineup, right? What if Max Muncy struggles? Could you move Max Muncy to second, move off of Lux, and keep Mookie Betts at shortstop? So, look, the beautiful thing in all this is really Mookie's versatility, his willingness to take on this challenge, and you have to commend him for that. But is this the best decision for the Los Angeles Dodgers long-term as far as optimizing and maximizing Mookie Betts' skill set? I'm not so sure the answer is yes to that. It's fun. It's a cool experience, right, to have Mookie play shortstop. But I think about the player and what he does at the plate with the stick, that's what I want to see him maximize. So, like I said, this is getting very interesting. Get your popcorn out, right? It's going to be a very fascinating couple of weeks here, possibly a couple of months at that shortstop position. I'm not saying they're going to trade Gavin Lux. I'm not saying it's okay. Get ready to speak Milwaukee if you're Gavin Lux. I think they want to see if his bat will play and how he handles second base. And maybe down the line, they might give another opportunity at shortstop. But for now, Mookie Betts is the Dodgers' permanent shortstop. And we'll have a lot of conversations about this in the coming weeks because, look, Mookie shorts off the entire year plus the bat moving forward. I don't know. It'd be a great story. If Mookie is able to play shortstop at a competent level and put up anywhere near the numbers that he did last season, he's going to run away with the MVP in the National League. But, hey, thank goodness. Never fear Mookie's here. But that's going to do it for this episode of Dodgers Dugout. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. If you haven't yet, do us a huge favor and subscribe to the Dodgers Nation YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Hit that like button. Remember, nothing brings us together quite like Dodger baseball. And until next time, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out. Thank <laughs> you.